Syria's terrifying tunnel of war. From war zones to natural disasters to humanitarian crises, a foreign correspondent's job is to put themselves in the thick of it and come back with the story. They're lined up here because almost every single one of them is dependent on handouts. But behind every successful deployment is a well-constructed plan. Decisions about where to sleep, where to get food, who to talk to and how to get around are made in advance and sometimes on the spot. Nala Ayed is a veteran foreign correspondent for CBC News based in London. She's been a witness to some of the world's biggest stories, including the ongoing crisis for the Rohingya fleeing Myanmar. So Nala, we got some great questions from our viewers and, and obvious ones in some ways saying, we see you in these places around the world where you know, people don't want to be themselves. Where do you go when we don't see you on camera? So let's start with where do you sleep? Mm -hmm. It's a really good question. Uh, and in the case of Bangladesh, actually, I didn't know where we would sleep when I was told where we were, where we were going exactly. So it's about a, doing a little bit of research and, and in that case learned very quickly that Cox's Bazaar, which is not far from the border, is actually quite a, a large city and that there were several hotels nearby and we didn't have any, an issue finding a place. In fact, there were so many journalists. The biggest issue was just actually finding a room. But in other places, you do have to get a bit creative. And it's sometimes in the places where you least expect it. One was, for me, uh, was in France, actually, a couple of years ago with the um, very tragic crash of the German wings aircraft uh, airplane, as you recall, in the Alps. Uh, it's a place I've never been. Uh, it's the Alps. You'd think there would be some hotels. It was a challenge um, to actually find a place. And uh, at one point, uh, there were local people who were coming around with phone numbers, their phone numbers, and offering places to stay up there. So a lot of us took advantage of that, and actually we created a bit of a, a live position in, in one of them. Um, other places, like, for example, Gaza, after one of the conflicts there, the border was opened on the Egyptian side. It was halfway through the night. Where do you stay when it's a place that unsafe and you don't want to be traveling around at night? Well, the local journalists we were working with suggested uh, a home of just an ordinary family very close to the border so that we sleep there and then move the next day to a hotel. Um, and in Haiti, we stayed also at a fixer's house when we went to Jack Mel to cover what the Canadians were, de were doing. Uh, we stayed with Canadian troops. You know, some of those sound like sort of reasonable accommodations. Have you ever had to do something that was just completely outside the frame? Well, actually, the one that sticks in my mind always is Afghanistan, and it was actually Tora Bora while the bombing was going on across uh, the valley where they thought that Osama bin Laden was. And in that case, there was nowhere to stay. So the locals offered a house that normally, a structure, I should say, that normally housed goats. So we just took our sleeping bags, and that's where we slept for three nights. We hear this word fixer. And, you know, in the business, we're so comfortable using this term that we don't stop to explain what we mean sometimes. So how valuable is a fixer and, and what role do they play in the work that you do? Well, the, the best way I like to describe it as a fixer is actually our secret weapon. Because when you go to a place like Bangladesh, which I have to say that it, this was my very first trip there, I know nothing about Bangladesh that I haven't just read in a newspaper or in a book. And so a fixer is someone who is from that country and knows the country intimately, speaks the language, knows how to get around. And if they don't know, then they know how to access the information to find out where you need to go, where to buy things where to sleep, what to do, who to talk to. And so usually uh, there's a whole network of fixers that we all trust, that, that we ask other journalists about. For example, the one we worked with in Bangladesh is someone that is known to some other Canadian media, and we talk to them as well. Uh, or you find them through the local university or the local newspaper. But without fixers in some of these places, Diana, we wouldn't be able to do our job. So they're a, a crucial part of what we do. One of the other questions we got, and a very good one, is when, as a journalist, you're going to a place that is a conflict zone or people are living, um, or barely living, actually, I mean, really without food, without water, trying to get both, what do you do? Where do you get food, water, and how difficult is that to make sure that, that you're keeping your own strength up, knowing that the people you're talking to can't do the same? It's a really good point, Diana. I think, it, again, to refer to the Bangladesh example, you kind of learn to eat at the beginning and the end of your day. Um, obviously, you don't want to be 
standing and eating in front of, as you say, people who, especially when we were there, uh, had actually some of some of whom had not had a meal in in weeks or days that they've been walking over from Myanmar, and so. It's 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 inappropriate to do and um, and not very efficient. So we we had to drive long distances to get to the refugee camp from where we were staying. But we learned to start the day early. There were very hot days, so we have to make sure you're hydrated. We carried a lot of water with us. That's something we definitely consumed as the day went on. And this, I always carry a little something with me because sometimes you do have an emergency or out later than you expect. But we try to leave the meals out of the gathering day. So eat the beginning at the end and just work all day flat out, come home and eat then. And they are long days and we appreciate you taking them on for us. Thanks, Nella. You're welcome.